one of the things that is hard for me is when we know what to do about something and we don't do it. That's the toughest thing. It's one thing to make a mistake. I make so many mistakes. But I have a hard time forgiving myself when I know what I need to do, I know how to do it, I have the time to do it, and I don't. I don't sleep well. What we carry on the trail for the dedication of the Vancouver Land Bridge Confluence Project, August 2008. Remember that Lewis was the scientist of the couple. We know that Lewis saw the hoary aster. He left a sketch and kept a sample pressed and dried like something in a card sent back from holy lands by some devoted uncle. We know how well he kept his watch. No doubt he heard the hiss of water over sand, of fur sliding through an ocean of grass, and knew the difference. All day he cast the heavy net of his attention and sorted the catch at night, the size and shape of a grizzly's track, the raucous calls of geese and ducks. He ground ink, mixed colors, and left his mark. At times, his notebooks seemed to fear the awful abundance of things. We know he never saw salt cedar, Russian olive, the ruthless canes of Himalayan blackberry. They came, like us, later. We don't know whether he noticed a certain lupin. Had it been in bloom, it would have seemed just one more patch of color on the spread quilt of the day, something to remind him of his sister's bonnet, his mother's apron, or laundry drying on a neighbor's line. He might have picked a stalk to count its leaves or tally its tight buds the way a man at rest might finger wet stones after rain or pick and chew a stem of grass. He might have seen cocoons hidden in the leaves. A few weeks more and a butterfly blue as trade beads or prairie sky would have been riding the breeze, dependent on this single plant. He could not have known how rare that lupin would become, how trained dogs would come to hunt it by scent, how every year it blooms more near the abrupt cliff of absence. If wild bees hummed prayers, they might contain the names of flowers in trouble. Air doesn't recall the shape of a bird's song. Water can't remember the weight of a swimming frog. Like Lewis, like Clark, we have set our feet on a bridge into the future, intending to arrive with everything we love, including the brown pelican, Kincaid's lupin, Fender's blue butterfly. We teach our children each step is a name that matters. We have traveled a long, long way and are traveling still. We carry the cost of failure, the lengthening list of what is gone already, of all that might be lost, knowing what we have to do, not knowing.